Welcome back to Football Daily for this week's Transfer Talk. The end of the season is nearly upon us, so let's see how some of the biggest clubs are looking to strengthen their squads this summer. Let's go. We start with the future of West Ham midfielder Declan Rice. The 23-year-old has been in sensational form for the Hammers this campaign, leading the club to the verge of a second European qualification in a row as well as the Europa League semi-final. It's been well documented that the England international is in high demand, as is the news that his current employers are doing everything they can to keep hold of him. At the beginning of this campaign, manager David Moyes claimed it would take a bid of £100 million to get his vice-captain. But as we approach the end of the season, that self-valuation has risen to 150 million. Rice, who has 29 caps for the three lines, is tied down at the London Stadium until 2025, but has reportedly turned down the advances from West Ham to extend that deal, rejecting the opportunity to become the highest paid player in the club's history. Chelsea have long been linked with a the player they released at 14 years old, as have both Manchester City and Manchester United. Yet, of the three, it looks like the Old Trafford club will be the only side that make a real go of signing him this summer. That's because, according to ESPN, their rivals have other focuses. Chelsea, currently hampered by government sanctions, need to address their defence first, while City appear to be closing in on the signing of striker Erling Haaland. United, however, believe that Rice can flourish under new manager Eric Ten Hag and that such an acquisition would be a real statement of intent as the club enter a new era. A lack of Champions League football, though, could influence Rice, who recently finished third in the voting for the Football Writers Player of the Year award, and that's even before considering whether or not West Ham will actually accept an offer for their prized possession. The reality is, unless it matches their gargantuan evaluation, they probably won't. We want to hear from you guys though, how much would you be willing to pay to see Declan Rice at your club? Is 150 million a bonkers amount? Let us know in the comments section below. It emerged last month that Everton would be open to offers for both Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison, and now for one of those there appears to be a fee in mind. Richarlison has been in excellent form for the Toffees over the last month, with four goals in his last five games, including the match winner in the 1-0 victory over Chelsea at the weekend. That's brought his Premier League tally to 8 for the campaign, and the Goodison Park hierarchy believe his strong end to the season means they can realistically ask for £50 million to get a deal over the line. And that's regardless of whether or not Frank Lampard's side are successful in their battle against relegation, with the 24-year-old having already decided his future lies away from Everton, according to Football Insider. His next step might not take him too far from the North West though, as Manchester United have been linked with a move for the 34-cap Brazil international in recent weeks. However, like with Declan Rice, Ralph Rangnick's failure to lead them to Champions League football next season could be a hindrance, with Richarlison having reportedly instructed his agent to find a club in Europe's elite competition. The former Watford man is no stranger to big money rumours. The former Watford man is no stranger to big money rumours, having switched from Vicarage Road in 2018 for a deal that could have risen to £50 million and gone on to score 51 goals in 148 matches. Infamously, in January 2020, Barcelona saw an astonishing £85 million bid rejected for his services, which is almost double what Everton hoped to get for their number 7 this summer. If they have accepted that Richarlison is on the way out, then where do you think he'll be playing next season and how much do you really think he's worth? Get your opinion down below. Monday night saw an end of the era for this Manchester United side. Juan Mata and Nemanja Matic received standing ovations when they were substituted in the 3-0 win over Brentford, whilst it also served as a send-off for Edinson Cavani and potentially for Phil Jones too, with the Englishman's future at Old Trafford in doubt. However, one person that didn't get to receive a proper goodbye was Jesse Lingard, who remained stuck on the bench all night. That's despite 22 years of service for the club, stretching back to when he joined them as a 7-year-old in the year 2000. After progressing through the ranks and having a few loan spells away, Lingard would go on to make over 200 appearances for them between 2015 and 2020, also becoming a useful member of Gareth Southgate's England squad. But his contract expires this summer, and as it stands, the 29-year-old will be leaving the club. After a year linked with West Ham following an impressive loan spell in the second half of the 2020-21 campaign where he scored 9 times in 16 appearances, they no longer appear to be in the race for the attacking midfielder. Instead, the 32 captain international could be playing football next season in Serie A. That's because, according to ESPN, both AC Milan and Juventus are interested in Lingard and are leading the chase ahead of a number of Premier League clubs including Newcastle United who had a low move rejected for him in January and Aston Villa. However, the lure of Champions League football, a competition in which Lingard has limited experience, could be enough to convince him the right move is to Italy. We're sure we'll find out in the coming weeks where he heads next. It's been quite a turnaround for Tottenham Hotspurs this season. 
Despite being prone to an underwhelming game on occasion, Antonio Conte has led them to fifth with four games remaining. With a match against fourth place North London rivals Arsenal still on their schedule, Champions League qualification is in their hands and could be essential to land some of their summer targets. Conte is eyeing up a centre-back to fit his system, having often played fullback Ben Davies as part of a three, so who is on their radar? Three names are near top of their list, Inter Milan pair Stefan de Vrij and Alessandro Bastoni, as well as RB Leipzig's Josko Gavardio. And according to Football Insider, Dutchman de Vrij is looking the most likely of this trio, having seen a massive drop in his valuation. Previously priced at £40 million by the Nerazzurri, the 30-year-old is likely to see bids of around £50 million accepted. The former Lazio player, who joined Inter on a free in 2018, has just one year left on his deal and has made over 150 appearances for the club, with almost 90 of them coming under the current Spurs boss between 2019 and 2021. However, Spurs could face competition from both Aston Villa and, you guessed it, Newcastle United, who are both looking to make an assault on the European spot's next campaign. There is also talk that Spurs would be willing to meet the £38 million valuation for Bastoni, who at the age of 23 has made over a century of appearances at San Siro. Also a former player of Conti's at Inter, the centre-back is now an Italian international, having racked up 11 caps. The Athletic are credited with saying that Josco Gavardio is on Spurs' shortlist, however the Croatian international is expected to be priced out of a move by Leipzig this summer, still having four years to run on his deal at the Red Bull Arena. Gavardio would be an absolutely sensational signing, but Spurs fans, we want to hear from you. Who is your ideal centre-back signing? Let us know down below. Perhaps one of the more sought-after defensive midfielders on the continent right now is Monaco's Aurelien Chouameni. The 22-year-old has courted the interest of Europe's top clubs, and as the season is coming to a close, those sides have found out just how much it's going to cost to make him one of their own. Monaco themselves battling for a Champions League spot this campaign have said it will take an offer of 70 million euros for them to even start talking with a potential buyer. This is likely to price out Chelsea, Juventus and Real Madrid from making a move, leaving Liverpool, Manchester United and PSG as the most likely destinations for the former Bordeaux star. Arsenal are also said to be entering the race for the youngster, who has made 32 appearances for Le Monegas and earned more minutes than any other outfield player this campaign. He has a goal and an assist to his name, but it is defensively where he really stands out. Chiuameni has 5.3 tackles and interceptions a game this season, fourth amongst all players in Europe's top five leagues for 2021-22. There's no doubt he can take another step up in his career, so it's surely just a matter of time before someone stumps up the 70 million euros to make him one of their own. Finally, a rare trip to the bottom of the Premier League, where in the wake of their relegation back to the Championship, Norwich City is starting to plan their next rebuild. One player, though, that might not be part of another attempt to get back into the top flight is fullback Max Ahrens, who has made over 150 appearances for the Canaries since his debut back in 2018. Still only 22 years old, Ahrens had previously caught the attention of both Arsenal and Manchester United, and both could be in the market for a right back. However, it won't be straightforward, with the likes of Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund and West Ham also linked with the England under-21 international, and each presenting a different kind of opportunity for the youngster. Valued at £20 million by transfer marked, Ahrens is the most valuable member of Dean Smith's squad, and it finally looks like Norwich are ready to accept their fate and cash in on the defender. So that was Transfer Talk for another week. Which of these stories is total nonsense? Which of these can you actually see happening? Let us know in the comments down below, as always. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to Football Daily with that notification bell switched on. We'll see you next time.